guys i know a lot of people have been struggling with Kha'Zix and you know the saying that it's impossible to make assassin Kha'Zix work in this meta don't worry i will save assassin Kha'Zix no matter what it takes i can't stand playing bruiser Kha'Zix it just doesn't feel the same so we're going to experiment and find new ways to play the champion change is good baby that being said i have a new build for you guys today that i think is being slept on like crazy ravenous hydra rush this item is super sleeper broken in my opinion and i've been testing running it as your first item on kha'zix and let me just say it feels amazing think of it as something similar to eclipse or Gore Drinker, but with a lot more flexibility. I want to talk more about it in game, so without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, here we go. Strap yourselves in, sit back, relax, have a drink, grab some food, do whatever you want, man. Um, and, you know, watch this game. Let's go with the Ravenous Hydra Rush. Uh, yeah, so this is something I've been doing fairly recently and i've been testing it out quite a bit and it feels really good man okay so i've been trying it with a few setups and i settled on this one which is with conqueror and absolute focus gathering storm i don't really feel like absolute focus gathering storm is needed per se especially if you're going more into a bruiser build but because i'm transitioning into an assassin build later on i like the absolute focus and gathering storm because it's just going to give you that uh, bit of ad to let you their camps faster and just you know deal more damage with assassinations later on and so i find this very valuable so yeah you might be wondering why the fuck would you ever run ravenous hydra first on kha'zix well <clears throat> okay well first off i'm doing a full clear all right nothing special but yeah let me just say this <clears throat> i have a sore throat my god i'm sorry all right so ravenous hydra is really really good for uh fixing the issues of Kha'Zix early game, right? So you are able to clear camps way faster, in particular the AoE camps uh, in the early game. These are, this is very important. Um, this will speed up your clear like crazy. So you're able to do Wolves, Raptors, and Krugs very, very quickly, uh, as opposed to not having the Tiamat active. Uh, no, not, not the active, sorry. The Tiamat passive, the Cleave. And so this Tiamat passive will make it very, very fast. For you to clear all the little small camps out of the way so that you can get isolation on the bigger camps or in general just clear aoe camps really really fast and this is very very good this is very good for kha'zix because honestly from my experience in this meta half of the reason you can't do well on kha'zix is because you're too slow and you can't like you're not fast enough to match the tempo of the enemy jungler who usually clears way faster than you so the ravenous hydra the ravenous hydra is very very good for um for giving you that extra value needed to uh, clear faster in the early game. On top of that, it has 70 AD for a 3,300 gold item. That is massive, man. That is enormous. So it's a very good power spike. Uh, and you have a lot of damage with the Ravenous Hydra. And you get Ability Haste. So you're not stuck with having zero CDR like you would normally have with Eclipse. You actually have CDR to work with. And that is enormous uh, for you know for uh what's the word it's it's enormous for just clearing the jungle and you know in fights as well it's very very valuable but yeah i find the conqueror setup to be very good with this page because you can um you know you can you know it's very very it synergizes very well with the dueling anyway i'm gonna this is my first gank of the game i'm gonna go on the olaf and unfortunately, he's an assassin, so I get destroyed, and I'm not able to flash out at the last second. His auto follows through, so I'm going to go down. That's absolutely tragic, but yeah. Now, with the build path, you don't want to be, um... <clears throat> you don't want to be hard prioritizing the Tiamat. Like, it's not a huge deal if you can't get it. For example, if you, like, only have enough for double longsword, you should just get the double longsword. Like, don't wait or anything, of course. Um, but yeah, you, you want to try to get the TM at first if you can, but if you can't, then it's not a big deal. Anyway, we're going to walk up here with the crab, and I think this game is perfect to show off the potential of Ravenous Hydra and matching the meta junglers. For example, Diana, a lot of people have trouble with Diana. Uh, this build will let you match the clear speed of Diana. It's really crazy, and it all comes from that little bit of AoE that you get with the TM at, 
and once you get the hydro it becomes even better because your cleave will proc on abilities too so you'll notice you're clearing waves and jungle camps really really fast and i find it so valuable man anyway you will you will see that this game like i am going to be insanely strong just by using the ravenous hydro and um you know <clears throat> That, that's that's just how it is uh, that's why i'm that's why i'm recommending it to you now and i feel like this is really being slept on so i'm going to be testing it more and we'll see how it goes but in the meantime i'm just going to do my thing and i have to clear my camps because if i don't uh we're going to fall behind the diana of course you have to clear your camps guys like this is one of the most important things you can do right now <clears throat> in the early game is just clear your camps it doesn't even matter if the enemy is like getting a few kills here and there it's not a huge deal unless they're like hard snowballing a lane you need to make sure you're taking your camps because uh from my experience the <clears throat> main uh the main the most important time of the game in this meta is the mid game so you want to make sure you're farming up and making sure you're strong for the mid game fights because they're very very important and it's the time where the game can swing the most and you know that, yeah, that's just from my experience man <clears throat> but yeah we're, we're taking the crux here right you can see how slow it is like Oh my god, I'm just auto-attacking these little things one by one. And if I had the tier mat here, I would just be done with this camp like 5 seconds earlier. <clears throat> which is really nice. Unfortunately, I really don't have anything to work with right now when it comes to my lanes. Uh, <clears throat> Nautilus Samira is absolutely shitting on my bot lane. So uh, there's not really too much I can do right now. Uh, so I'm just going to continue doing my thing. I'm going to play the map. I'm going to play my camps. And then later on we'll be able to do something uh better but yeah i'm just going to go into the coffers while i'm here this is not a huge deal i couldn't really get the tier map because of uh my gold income early game i didn't get the crab which means i couldn't afford the pickaxe early game or the hydra so this is why i'm just going into the long swords and this coffers warhammer it's not a huge deal in fact the coffers warhammer is very very good as well uh for the cdr early game but you know if you can get the tier map get the tier map if you can it's just that I didn't, I was not able to this game. Uh, so I'm going to evolve my Q here. I like the Q evolve. Obviously, like we're talking about uh, cleaving down camps and increasing our clear speed. So obviously, we do want the Q evolve. And I'm going to go into the Erlaf here and try to go for a gank. We're just going to jump on him in isolation and he's going to go down no issues there with a couple of Qs. And we do proc the Conqueror and stuff. And I use my Void Assault just in case he bursts me down again like he did before. Uh, I don't want to make that mistake again. So I'm just like, yeah, okay. What? Fine. Fine. I'll, I'll use my, um, I'll use my R for you. No worries. <clears throat> and so immediately we go back to, to our camps and we make sure we're taking them. Okay. That's the one thing we want to make sure we're doing. And then I decide to go into the Herald here because this is very, very important to take most of the time. But it's a bad idea because Dan is there and she checks. So I'm just going to back off there. No issues. Um, I did want to get that. But yeah, honestly, it could have been a bit greedy. I should have just straight up just gone into my camps again. Um, but it is what it is. And now my focus is trying to get the tier map. Which I will be getting after my... Uh, after my... After my camps here. And that's just going to let me, like I said, cleave down all the camps. Uh, and... You know, just killed the small little raptors in a few little orders. And that's going to be very, very good. Man, I'm telling you, it feels so, so nice to have a very well-rounded item as your first item early game. And I've been running it a lot, and it feels great. I think every single game, my Ravenous Hydra has been pinged. It, people are like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you building this? And I was like, bro, it's good. Trust me. Trust me, it's good. Anyway, um, the owner is going to go onto the Nautilus here. And we're going to look for a fight. Uh, Dino's over the wall, so I need to be very, very careful, but Leona's going to re-engage with her ulti, find Samira in isolation, and we'll give her one last Q. Nice, we missed the W on the Nautilus, love to see that. I uh, don't want to flash here, I'm just going to give an ice, uh, a passive slow on the Nort, and Ezra's going to pick him up. So that's really, really nice, and we are able to take the dragon off this. So, uh, overall, this is why you want to make sure you're just staying ahead, right? You're staying ahead, you're not throwing your... You, you know, you're not giving the jungler any unnecessary kills early you're just doing your thing taking your camps absolutely vibing in the early game <clears throat> while your team runs it down and then later on you're able to do more because you're strong and you've managed to you know maintain your lead in the early game this is super important guys like 
I know it might be a little boring. Oh, just farming all the time. Ooh, I don't want to farm. Oh, I want kills. No, nah, bro. You need your camps. It's like... It's like going for... It's like... Uh, it's like working out without having protein. Like, you're not going to build muscle. You're going to... You're going to just tire yourself out while not fueling uh, your body with what it needs. You need your camps so that you can actually do your thing and farm and this is what i find is most valuable in this meta because kills don't mean everything it by no means do kills mean anything it's a lot about scaling with this meta and so yeah um olaf's gonna die in the mid so is leblanc and dinah's gonna be pushing the lane so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna r from the bush walk up to her hold my leap Watch this, look at this, I use one W, a few auto attacks, and all the lane minions are just gone. And I'm just gonna disrespect her and auto attack her down because I don't need my Q, apparently. Like, how insane is that? Look how fast I just cleared that wave. In an instant, almost, I just isolated the Diana in, in a 1v1. While she was standing in the middle of a massive wave, I just press W, and the Ravenous Hydra is gonna cleave down all the minions and isolate her for me. I mean, yes, I didn't even need the isolation, but still, like, imagine if you did need the isolation. You can just clear the whole wave in, like, one second, and then, bam, you have isolation, and suddenly you have a very good advantage. It's, like, so nice, man. Like, I can't... I, you can't make this up. Like, it's just so valuable. <laughs> and I've been really, really loving this, this build, man. <laughs> now, as far as... Uh, I mean, I'm going to go into Herald here because I just killed that Diana. And uh, we do heal to full HP, by the way. The Omni Vamp on this, on this item is insane. I'm not sure if you get the healing from the cleave as well, but I think you do, and it's kind of insane. Anyway, um... <coughs> excuse me, I'm still a bit sick. Uh, you might be wondering what the rest of the build is. Uh, the answer to that is anything you want. It doesn't actually matter. You can go Bruza Kha'Zix, you can go Assassin Kha'Zix, it really doesn't matter. For me, I'm running Duskblade here because I'm an idiot. Uh, I find the Swain in isolation here, and I'm looking to put the Herald topside. And um, I'm just going to manage to get a flash on him last second and pretty much kill him with no issues. So that's nice. I pick up my fourth kill of the game and we're going to drop the Herald here for Gangplank. Uh, the reason I wanted to go topside here with the Herald is because um, Gangplank <clears throat> specifically said in the early game that he was going to be scaling. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I mean, Gangplank scales really well. Let's drop the Herald for him, get him some gold, and hopefully he can scale a bit faster. And this ends up being, being a pretty good play. Uh, because the GP is going to be very, very valuable in this game. Now, I'm I'm trying to walk up here. I'm, I want to go onto the Olaf here. Olaf is extremely strong. Um, I unfortunately messed up my combo here. I should have just instantly stealthed and the Olaf is going to assassinate me. It's really unfortunate. Um, <clears throat> what the hell happened to Olaf, man? Like, what the fuck was that? My gosh. I, yeah. Look, I mean, I'm... I, I have no words there, like, it's just unfortunate that I can't kill him there, and he just one-shots me out of the blue, which is really, really unfortunate. Uh, but it is what it is, now we learn our lesson not to fuck with that Olaf, and that Olaf is going to be an absolute menace later on in the game. We see the Diana walking into my jungle, so I'm going to try and walk up to contest her. I don't want her doing anything to my jungle, but unfortunately she is going to take my blue here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just follow her. I'm going to stalk her like the hunter I am, right? Like the predator I am. Uh, we see her here, and the gangplank's going to try going on her, but it's not going to not going to work. She's going to get barreled, but what I'm going to do instead, I'm constantly tracking her here. I know her red's up, so instead I'm just going to walk up here and punish her for invading me because of all the time she spent uh, to take my blue. So it's really, really easy for me here to just jump on her here and one-shot her. Because, uh, you know, I mean, like, she was not prepared for that. <clears throat> she saw me just die. She probably wasn't expecting a hard invade like that. But I know exactly what she was going to do after she invades me. And we managed to pick up a kill just like that very, very comfortably. So that's really, really nice. Um, we are almost level 11 now, so I want to be getting that. Uh, as for the evolution goes, uh, you can evolve anything you want. It really doesn't matter. For me, I'm going standard QE evolve. Uh, just for some extra mobility, assassination potential. As I said, I am going assassin, so <clears throat> I, I will be doing, you know, just mostly a lethality from this point, from this point on, with the QE evolve style. And yeah, we're gonna be able to take the dragon here as well, which is really, really nice. And 
I have a few options here. I could just go and clear my camps, which would take not long at all. And that is very valuable. <laughs> or I can just like look for picks and stuff. But instead, yes, I'm going to go for my camps. I'm sorry if it's a little bit boring, but um, you know, this is something that needs to be done. It's it's the whole playstyle, right? The whole playstyle is just going around farming everything with the Hydra <clears throat> and making sure you're on top of things. Like, look, I am over leveling. Uh, I am over leveling the Diana. Can you imagine that? Over leveling a Diana as Kha'Zix just by farming? No, you can't. Like, it's crazy, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm looking for a gank here because the bot lane is very overextended. Uh, Leona's going to have a nice engage here. But unfortunately, she's going to go down. I'm going to hold my leap because I know Samira is going to dash through me. And then we're just going to, I mean, like, self-explanatory. We're going to pick up a double kill just like that. And <coughs> that was all she wrote. So another two kills on my belt, which is really, really nice. And then I'm just going to recall straight away because we have our mythic item, which is Dustblade. You don't have to go Dustblade. You really don't. You can go anything. You can go Gore Drinker. You can go... Prowler's Claw, you can go Eclipse. Eclipse is going to be very, very good with this build because you're going to have double the Omni Vamp. Like, imagine that, man. It's just insane. Oh my god. And then you can follow it up with a Cleaver if you want to go more into Bruiser. Or you can go into uh, more Lethality or, armor, or like flat percentage armor pen, like I'm going to do. Anyway, there's a lot of options you can do with this build. But yeah. Anyway, the, um, the GP is going to pick up the Diana. That's nice. So I'm going to decide to invade her here. Uh, and try and, you know, capitalize off of that death. <coughs> gonna pick up the raptors here. Unfortunately, I don't respect the bush, and I'm gonna get hard CC'd here, but I do manage to uh, stealth and kind of just make them lose vision for a bit, and then I jump out into safety. So, thankfully, there was not really any heavy follow-up there. Um, yeah, and my team's gonna pick up the Samira here, but, you know, I'm a Kha'Zix, and I'm, like, 0 HP, so I'm not gonna be able to do anything in that scenario there, uh, we're just going to try and heal up on the crab, and then, yeah. That's basically it. We see the Olaf here. Now, this is a scary fucking moment for me, because I don't have my R to outplay him here. If I had my R, I can kill him, no problem, but I'm very, very scared of that guy. Very scared, and I end up flashing out because I'm like, oh shit, he's on my ass, and I don't have my, my Vodasol. I can't, like, I can't fight this without kiting him away. So, yeah, I had to, I mean, I, I didn't have to, but I flashed out there. Anyway, Diana is going to do the same thing I did to her before, and she's going to try and invade me, but, like, it's not going to matter. I have a lot of lifesteal, and I'm going to double jump her, because why the fuck not? <laughs> why not, man? I'm just going to double jump her. Why is she invading me there? Who knows, but at least the Ezreal is there to help me. Um, I don't actually think I even needed the Ezreal there, but it, uh, he does help me out there very, very nicely, so we do take that. Now I'm going to recall, and my next item is going to be <coughs> the LDR. You might be wondering, why LDR? Right, I didn't touch on the lesser runes, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so I'm running Alacrity, which will increase his clear speed um, and increase the amount I can cleave my camps. That's very valuable. And I'm also running Cutdown. So I'm running Cutdown and LDR to deal more damage to the tankier enemies. And let me just say, every single champ in the game is going to be tankier than you at this point, right? Almost all items have health now. Like a lot of items have health on them. And... You know, having cut down is going to be very, very valuable. You can see that uh, against the Olaf, for example, he has he's very tanky, and I'm able to kind of cleave him down very, very comfortably with Conqueror and cut down. And I don't even have LDR yet, so imagine when I have LDR, my Qs are just going to hit like a truck. Like, it's really, really nice. And so, um, I can't exactly fight this guy here. Actually, I'm going to try. <laughs> I don't really do much damage to him, but I know my team's coming up, and so I'm just going to try and buy time for him, for my team to come up. And I face check here, which is really bad. Um, I shouldn't really be face checking this, but oh well. Um, he throws an axe and I just narrowly live. Uh, and I'm really low, so I can't do anything. Dan's gonna try to pick me up, but it's not gonna happen. Olaf's gonna go down. I'm so fucking low. I can't really do anything here. Um, I can chuck out a W, but she walks back and it misses. So um, Lena's gonna pick everything up. So that's nice. White comfortably played. It's just unfortunate because this Olaf is so strong. He has death stance, by the way. So I, I, um, yeah, no amount of build or anything is going to change the way I can fight him. Uh, I just have to be very, very careful around him. I mean, yeah, if I had like Eclipse Cleaver here, sure, like that would be, that'd be great. But, you know, 
The reason I'm as strong as I am now is because of the Hydra and the fact that I'm able to walk around the map, sustain, and clear quickly. But yeah, the fight's going to break out here. Samira is unfortunately going to pick up the Ezra at the last second, but I'm going to be here to clean that up with uh, just a simple EQ auto attack. And yeah. <laughs> so as far as damage goes, there's not a huge difference with... I mean, like, there is a noticeable difference to not having lethality for assassinations uh, with the Hydra, but uh, it's very... I, th I think it's worth it in the end because you're getting more experience overall because of the fact that you can clear faster. And um, it's, it, this is this in itself is very, very valuable and is more important, in my opinion, than just having lethality for assassinations. And it's not like you can one-shot people nowadays anyway. I mean, obviously, yeah, you will have those one-shot moments, but for the most part, a lot of people don't die in one hit anymore, especially if there's peel, etc. So, yeah, you want to make sure you're kind of... Um, preparing yourself for more extended fights and that's why i love this build uh it's just very 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 safe you know look look man i'm level 14 this is huge i'm matching the level of my solo laners who get solo experience this is huge i have 174 cs at 21 minutes that is really really good for a jungler and so i'm gonna try and farm up to my ldr here i tell the gp to back off of my grump and then we're just going to clear our camps here and then recall for the LDR spike. <laughs> and this LDR spike is very, very good because it means we're able to deal with any sort of uh, tanky enemy. And this is bad. I try and help the, the gangplank here, but I actually run into the bot lane. And I'm, I'm going to get flashed on here, which is unfortunate. And I'm going to go down. So this was really bad. This was really bad. Honestly, I should have just let that guy die. But I didn't know. I wasn't aware that the bot lane was coming up as well. But I should have expected that. That's my bad. And the enemy team's going to start the Baron. Um, unfortunate. So, yeah, I've got the LDR now. And this is really, really... This is going to be proving to be very good. You'll notice that I'll be dealing a lot more damage to people, especially, especially Olaf. And because I'm not building any HP, uh, I'm going to be able to kind of, you know, just cleave people down very nicely. Uh, my team is going to try pick off any enemies that they can after the Baron. Fortunately, LeBlanc is going to go down here. I don't really know what Leona's doing. She's kind of in there doing her thing. And, um, you know, we're going to be able to clean that up really nicely because of the GP, ulti, and Ezra were doing work. So really, really nice. Unfortunately, yeah, it is absolutely tragic. I can't participate in that because, well, obviously I got picked. So it's kind of a waste of time. Very unfortunate. But we're going to be able to just, you know, two, two people with the Baron, Baron left. So that's fine, I guess. Now... I'm at this point where I'm like, okay, fuck everyone else. I'm going to take everything I see. And if you try and take everything from me, I will just take more from you. So I'm in my very greedy, greedy, greedy mood here because I'm two levels off 16. And that's going to be a massive power spec. Anyway, we see the Diana here and we're just going to, you know, like no issues here. We have the lifesteal from Ravenous Hydra and we're just going to cleave her down with our Qs. And she doesn't have enough damage to kill me. And even if she did, I can flash out if I need to. So yeah, that's nice. And we are like low HP now. So we're going to go back onto Krogs and just heal. Look at the healing, man. Look at the juicy, juicy healing. I could, en I could enhance the healing further if I went for isolation, but it's fine. We just healed to basically full HP with one camp. Very fucking juicy, mate. But yeah, one more level of 16. Now we want to get our lethality and get level 16 so we can you know actually do our job as assassins we've prepared ourselves very nicely that's what i love about hydra we prepare ourselves like crazy um you know and i'm just here chilling farming gp is gonna pay me yes this is understandable but i'm pretty sure i don't need to be mid to do like like what am i gonna do here they have fucking baron like i'm not gonna do shit there like i'm just gonna use my time wisely and take all the camps i possibly can and then i'm gonna come over because if I don't do that, then I'm going to, and I, and we lose somehow, I'm going to fall behind. Anyway, Olaf's going to try going for an engage. I'm going to cleave him down as much as I can, but it's just not going to be enough. Fucking, what the fuck is this? Death Dance is insane, but I'm finally going to be able to cleave him down. Um, Samira's going to ulti, I get an isolated Q on her. She runs into isolation, and I'm going to be able to jump on her and pick her up there for a double kill, and then I'm going to instantly jump out. And yeah, nice, man. Nice, the, the cleave coming in clutch, and my Conqueror stacks are very useful on the Samira there. Unfortunately, the Olaf's death stance is just way too much to deal with, and not even my cut down damage or you know LDR could stand up against that. 
so he's gonna just wipe our fucking team off the face of the earth so that was unfortunate <laughs> now i'm looking for a good chance to get a pick here but what i don't realize is that this area is watered so um i do manage to get 16 here and i'm just gonna wait in the bush here hey what's up we're just chilling and then i see the diana walking up here and i'm like Oh, this is a bit fucking sus. Like, this is a bit sus, man. I'm just waiting for Baron, waiting for a good pick opportunity. But then the Nort is going to hook the bush. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. And this is really poorly played by me. I'm going to just get altered by the Diana. And I cancel my R, man. Just tragic, tragic, tragic. Oh, my God, we didn't talk about it. I'm not even going to talk about that. Let's just let's just skip over it. Enemy team is going to get the dragon. And, yeah, that's, that's going to be it. So, hello. Um... Uh, for some reason, my team decided to pick a fight like 2v4 in the mid lane, so I don't really know why they did that, but we are back, and I'm going into my Yumbus Ghostblade, which is going to be a lot, uh, very, very useful for dealing more damage and assassinating. So, we're finally going to be able to get some more lethality, and, you know, that's going to be very, very useful just for going for the assassinations. Anyway, we're going to try and collapse on the Olaf here. Olaf's going to go fucking ape shit and jump on my team. Uh, and I'm just gonna destroy him with my full combo there, so that's really nice. And my GP just narrowly lives. So, yeah, the, the LDR and the cutdown doing some pretty solid damage there. I think cutdown did about maybe, what was it, like a hundred and about a hundred extra damage or something like that, which is really, it's quite nice. Like, that's, that's pretty damn, uh, that's pretty damn solid. A thousand damage on cutdown is very, very solid. Uh, and we'll, we'll take that very, very easily. So what I should have done here is I should have just taken the tower in the bot lane, but I decided to recall instead just for the ghost blade so I can group up with my team and just, you know, make sure I'm there for them. <clears throat> Especially now that Baron's coming up, we want to make sure we're just grouping now. We have, we are very, very strong. Five items in at 27 minutes. Like, this is so good. We are just so, we're so strong. But because of the nature of the enemy team, uh, we have to be very careful. Especially because of the durability update, obviously everyone is more tanky. We just need to make sure we're playing it extremely careful and we don't make any stupid mistakes. So that's all we need to do right now. And so what I'm going to do here is walk up to the top side and look for anyone who might potentially catch the wave by themselves. Uh, this can be Olaf as well. Like I am that strong right now that if I get the jump on the Olaf, I can just 1v1 him if I play it right. And so... I'm pretty confident that I can just 1v1 anyone at this point. But yeah, we got Death Stance on the enemy team. We got fucking Plagius Steel Caps. Everyone trying to counter me. It is what it is. Uh, but it's not going to matter because we're going to be playing it safe. And we're going to be playing it you know, very, very comfortably. Because we have so much utility going for us. With the Hydra, you know, with the Lifesteal, with the CDR, like Cut Down, LDR. So much we have going for us. Only thing we need to keep in mind is that we're very, very squishy. Now we are waiting here to see if anyone catches the wave, but it's not going to be it. Everyone's just grouping. They're going to be playing ARAM, uh, which is not great for Kha'Zix. We got to be very, very careful when we pick our engages. We're not going to be going blindly in, uh, especially because they have Dyna ulti and Nautilus ulti, which is very, very hard counter. It's a hard counter to Kha'Zix for sure. So we got to be <clears throat> careful of that. If we just went raw lethality, we would have Edge of Night by now, but you know, uh, because because of the fact that we went the Hydra, we are able to get so much experience on our belt right now, and that's why we're level 16 at this point. Anyway, Samira's gonna walk up too far. She's isolated. I find a good chance to go in. I'm gonna get Nautilus ultied. Uh, no, sorry, Nautilus hooked, but I get uh, my, my voice assault at the last second. I'm gonna W the Samira one last time, and then the GP's gonna pick up the Samira with an ulti. And then for some reason, Olaf's at the back here, and he's gonna 1v5, and uh, he's gonna go down. And then it's a given that we go for the Baron. Now, I don't know why this GP keeps pinging me, man. Just fucking relax. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm playing this game incredibly safe and making sure I'm not throwing at all. And we're going to be able to pick up the Baron there. Level 17, enormous. Uh, and, you know, poor Diana, man. That's all I'm going to say. Like, Diana is forced to kind of just play for a team. And look at her. She's level 15. How sad is that? This is because we have made sure that we don't fall behind with the Hydra. I'm telling you, man, the Hydra does wonders for you. Trust me. Not only does it sustain you in the early game, but it will give you the AOE needed to clear camps fast. My guy, this is the successor to Sanguine Blade. Try this out, please. <laughs> it's so good. 234 CS. 
Bro, we are farming up a storm, and we finally got our last serrated Dirk, by the way. So now, now is the time where we can assassinate properly. Like, we can actually do our job. Just kidding, enemy team still has Death Dance, so we gotta keep that in mind. But, trust me, like, we are fully scaled now, and all we need to do is not get CC'd in fights, and we're fine. So yeah, <clears throat> gonna pick up the Cloud Drake here. We actually get the Cloud Soul, that's really, really nice for my R Evolve. Um... Diana's just going to get hard juiced up here. Uh, she's going to get destroyed by the Leblanc. And we're just going to use the Baron to push down in the bot side. And go for the Inhibitor Tower. Um, obviously going to still be just a little bit careful. Olaf's going to be going apeshit on the Gangplank in the mid. Um, but he's, Gangplank's actually going to pick up the Olaf, which is crazy. Um, and for some reason, the why these guys are doing this is beyond me. But they decide to go in 2v3. And it doesn't really make sense, and we're just going to pick them up very, very comfortably. And this is going to be the end <coughs> of the game, guys. So, I hope I showed you the value of the Hydra Rush this game. I definitely recommend it. I'm going to be testing out, testing it out more, maybe with some Bruiser builds as well. We're just going to fucking suicide here. It's fine. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Try this out. I feel like it's being slept on. I really feel like this Hydra Rush is being slept on like crazy. Give it a try, it feels insanely good early game, and it will make you scale like a monster. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. See ya.